Tonight, we're going to be talking about the gift of tongues. In particular, what does it mean to speak in tongues? And so uh, let's just have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to be with us tonight. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you that you are great and wonderful uh, to us, Lord. And we pray that you would bless the next few moments that we sit at your word. Would you speak to us? And Lord, would you uh, just change our lives as we encounter you through your word? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So uh, tonight, like I said, we're going to be talking about, yes, I speak in tongues, but no, I'm not crazy, okay? And uh, we're going to be just basically talking about what does it mean to speak in tongues uh, in our particular life, okay? And what does it mean um, to, to engage in that gift, okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39 says this. Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, and he says, So my friends, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak in tongues. Be eager to prophesy and do not forbid to speak in tongues. I want, I want you to speak in tongues is what he's saying. Don't hold, don't hold back. Uh, so before I begin, I, I want to preface this by saying that um, we are a Pentecostal church. We discussed this a little bit last week. Pentecost, uh, we're called Pentecostal at times because on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended. And as a result of that, uh, that's when the Holy Spirit came, and so we've often had that name. So Pentecostal often refers to churches that really emphasize certain movements of the Holy Spirit. That means that there are demonstrations of the Spirit that are present within our congregation. I think about Sunday uh, when we were in church. In particular, the last three Sundays have been absolutely wonderful. God has been blessing. There has been such a strong presence of God there. Um, However, we, we've got to be careful that we don't just pass on Pentecostal experience, but we also pass on Pentecostal explanation. We just don't want people to know that there's such a thing as tongues or miracles or healing or prophecy, these things, but we want to be able to explain them to the next generation. That's what Peter does on the day of Pentecost. They stand up, they're talking in tongues, and then he says, wait, wait, this is that. They say, what in the world are all these people speaking in tongues for? For these languages. And Peter says, no, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So we don't want just demonstration. We want demonstration and doctrine, you know, experience and explanation, because it's easy to do things, but not pass on to the next generation the reason why we do them. And uh, so that's the first thing I want to start off with tonight. Secondly, just to preface, I, I want to say that while the gift of tongues is available, we got into this last week, while the gift of tongues is available to all believers, all people, uh, and the baptism of the Spirit, the gift of tongues, gifts of the Spirit in general are available to all believers, I want to unequivocally say that speaking in tongues and spiritual gifts as a whole are not a badge or a trophy that you have arrived in the kingdom of God and you have made it and everybody else is trying to, to get there. It's not, this is not the way to view it. Just because we speak in tongues doesn't mean that we have arrived or reached the climax of truth in God. Just because we speak in tongues or pray in the spirit, another way to say that, doesn't mean we've reached a level in our walk with God and are good to coast the rest of the way. Um, and, and you are not Pentecostal simply because you speak in tongues. So here's what I would say to us as a way to understand tongues tonight. Tongues are not the climax of discipleship, but they are a gateway to discipleship. Let me say that again, because I think that's important. Tongues are not a climax to discipleship. It's not the end of you being a disciple, but it's a way that we can walk through to become greater disciples. It's one of the many ways God has established the gateways to be disciple. Okay, so what, what are tongues? That's the first thing we're asking you tonight. Speaking in tongues is a gift. It's a practice whereby the Holy Spirit empowers you to speak in a language that you do not know. And so there are two kinds of tongues, two kinds of spiritual languages that we find in Scripture. First of all, we find what is labeled as a known tongue, and we also find out what is labeled an unknown, known and unknown. Not, not, not uh, two hard categories there, pretty easy to remember. So let's look at them in Scripture. First of all, we have a known tongue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse, 20, uh, verse 10, Paul says that one of the gifts of the Spirit that are given to the body are different kinds of tongues. 
there are different kinds of tongues. There, there are many interpretations, but I, I, I believe that this is a reference here to what uh, we have labeled as known tongues or known language. He says different kind of tongues, different kinds of languages is what Paul is saying. And so let me prove it to you in the scripture. Acts chapter four, Acts chapter two, excuse me. We see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in the different languages. That's what it says in Acts 2, uh, verse 4. And then in verse 5, it says this. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it each of us are hearing our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, other parts of Libya, Cretans, Arabs, we're all hearing the wonders of God in our own language. Here's what I want you to catch. Known tongue, known languages. These uneducated fishermen were speaking in languages that they had never heard. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak in a language that they did not know. And so I would say to us today that when we pray in the Spirit, just another way of saying uh, praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, when, when we speak in tongues, sometimes we are praying we are speaking in a language that is known around the world. I will give you uh, two examples here. Uh, I have a pastor friend in Tennessee who he had a member at his church. It was actually his brother-in-law. And he would say, listen, my brother-in-law's from, his brother-in-law was sitting there when he told this story. My brother-in-law is from Polk County, Tennessee. Now, you may not know anything about Tennessee, uh, but that is boondocks. That is, you know, uh, that, that's, just, that's just a country area. And um, his brother-in-law, boy, he, he's, just, he's just a good old country fella. And uh, nothing wrong with that at all. And, uh, but he, you know, he's, he's like me. Uh, you know, we're good to know English, let alone another language. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, we're good to know English. And um, he, was in the, he was in prayer meeting one night or service, and he got to praying in tongues. And there was a man who was there. He was, a, he was part of a Native American tribe out west, just happened to be there in the service. And he came up afterwards and he said, that man was speaking fluently in our, in our native language. And, and, and the pastor said, listen, my, my brother-in-law barely knows English, let alone, um, let alone this dialect from over uh, out west in this native tribe. He was praying in tongues and it was a language that had been spoken elsewhere. I had a pastor friend of mine who went to India and he was praying uh, over someone, and he just began to pray in the Spirit. And as he prayed in the Spirit, uh, there were, as he prayed in tongues, prayed in the Spirit, he began to pray in this particular dialect, this Indian dialect, and the translator, uh, the person called the tr translator over and said, he's praying in our dialect. He had no idea. Oftentimes, sometimes, it just happens, uh, as we're empowered by the Spirit, sometimes we pray in languages that are known. But secondly, we, are pray, we pray in unknown languages, or what we call unknown tongues. Now, years ago, people used to laugh at Pentecostals, spirit-filled churches, and mock them because they said they prayed in heavenly languages, in which it was between them and God. But now, if you study scripture, and you study scholars in particular who, who are reading the scripture, you'll find that evangelicals, Protestants, and even Catholics will now agree that this praying in some heavenly language exists. First Corinthians chapter 13 and 1 says this, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I want you to catch that. If I speak in the tongues, the languages of men and or angels, there's this category of men and angels, human and non-human. Uh, Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 14, the chapter over, verse 2, for anyone who speaks in a tongue, a language, does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them, but they, are, they utter mysteries in the spirit. 
See, there's a clear understanding in scripture that there is a tongue, a language that people can speak in that is not understood by someone else in the world, but it is a language between them and the Father. For my experience, and th there is no scripture for this, and by that, I, don't, I mean, scripture doesn't tell us everything about tongues. It doesn't tell us how to talk in tongues. It doesn't tell us how to do some of these things. Uh, and so that's where we have to live by the Spirit on. But from my experience, most people are praying in unknown tongues. They're praying in some uh, language between them and God. And so that's why you can hear people pray in a few syllables and it be legitimate. And you're over here like, what in the world? What kind of language is that? But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's between them and God. They're praying between them and God. So before, before we move on to anything else, I, I want to say uh, this, because I think it's important. Speaking in tongues requires faith. And I think why I'm having a whole lesson on, on, on tongues, a whole, a whole night where we focus on tongues, first of all, is because uh, how foreign it is to most of us. You know, if, someone, if we pray for someone and they get out of a wheelchair, it's like, hey, wow, that's wonderful. But for me to pray in some syllables and something looking and resembling, sounding like a language that I don't know, that's a little weird. That's a little different. Why in the world would you do that? Uh, you know, it's quite ridiculous we, we can think sometimes that God would have us come together or in our own personal time, and would enable us to pray in a language that we don't even understand. But, but let, me, let me remind us of why I think another reason why we pray in tongues, because our mere human words cannot fully articulate the God of heaven and earth. All languages, if you were to put them together, cannot articulate the goodness of God and cannot articulate what we need. And so I think sometimes that praying in the spirit is a way we move past our intellect. We'll see a little bit later. Paul says, I pray in with my understanding, my mind, my native language, and then I pray in the spirit as well. But if your faith can be nicely and neatly formatted, then I, I would say it's not the faith of scripture. Because scriptural faith, biblical faith, there is that understanding where we know what we know the details and the intricacies of it, but there's also that sense of we walk in faith. And I think that's what we have to do um, with tongues. So, so that gives you a little bit about tongues. What are tongues? There are, it's this language that we speak in that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do that we do not know. It can be a language around the world, or it could be uh, a heavenly language. So let, let's look for just a few moments, because um, I think this is where I want to spend the bulk of my time explaining the role of tongues. So I'm going to highlight tonight what three roles and purposes of tongues, the languages we speak in as a result of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And I want to highlight the three ways that I think tongues operate as a language, as a spiritual language. First of all, speaking in tongues is a personal language. It's a personal language. As I already noted in 1 Corinthians 14 and 2, Paul says that the believer who speaks in tongues in this, in this language, they're empowered by the Holy Spirit, is speaking a conversation between them and God. It's a conversation between them and God. Later, Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 14, 28, that if there is no interpretation for that person, uh, if there's no interpretation for, for, for that language, for that person to speak, to continue speaking in that language, however, just between them and God. And there's a later discussion to be had about, um, about tongues within, within our worship service, but he says if there is no interpretation, if, it's, if, if this time of prayer language is this speaking in tongues is not for the greater body, then let that person just pray between them and God. They can continue praying in tongues, but let them pray between them and God in a way that doesn't bring distraction. The text reveals this in 1 Corinthians 14, that one can pray in tongues and it be a language that helps to facilitate one's personal relationship with God. Praying in tongues is a way to help facilitate our personal relationship with God. Another way to say it is this, speaking in tongues operates as a way to have intimacy with God. It is a language of intimacy. Not intimacy in the way the world views it with its uh, sexualization of that word, but intimacy in terms of closeness, nearness. There's a dear friend of ours who 
She said the night she first spoke in tongues and since then, she said it just felt like it was just me and God in our moment. It was, it was a moment of closeness. Is, is this the only way to be close with God? Absolutely not. There are other ways to be close with God, but it is a way that God has created for us. See, the fact of the matter is your intellect can only do so much. Doesn't matter how smart we are, our intellect can only do so much, but there are certain times you need something that goes beyond your ability to rationalize and reason. God is bigger than grammar and syntax. God is bigger and more sophisticated uh, than all of our sophisticated languages and linguistics. And sometimes we need something that is just outside of our normal rationality, our normal uh, reason to communicate with God. We were in Nicaragua and uh, the pastor's wife knew a little bit of English, very little bit of English, and we knew even less Spanish. And so... <laughs> And uh, we, were, we happened to be down there. Me and my, I see uh, Jessica laughing, uh, missionary to a Spanish-speaking country. But, you know, uh, so we, we went down there. We were, I, I was just kind of helping anywhere I could. I'd been invited to come along. And uh, these were, uh, this was at a very, uh, the mission, uh, the Nicaraguan pastors were some of the best people in the world. Uh, some, of the, some of the white missionaries from America who were there were strict, hardcore, fundamentalist, we don't believe in speaking in tongues. Don't you do any of that. Um, and uh, they found out there was a Pentecostal coming and they were a little worried. Um, but we started praying with the Nicaraguan pastor's wife and who was just overwhelmed. And uh, we were praying in English and then my aunt goes to praying in tongues and, um, and the Nicaraguan pastor's wife just began to weep. She didn't, we didn't understand what she was praying in Spanish. She didn't understand what we were praying in English. But there came a point where the spirit of the Lord descended and my aunt began to pray in the spirit. And there was a sense of connection, a connection on a deep primal level. And it's the same with God. It's the same with God. Speaking in tongues is a language that helps us to be able to connect with God on a deep level. Is it the only way? Absolutely not. But it is a way that God's provided. So because it is a personal language, a language of intimacy, it serves to the biblical word here is it starts to edify us, make us better, to encourage us. First Corinthians 14 and 4 tells us anyone who speaks in tongues, they edify themselves, build themselves up. But the one who prophesies builds up the church. So there were some days I don't feel like praying. And there are some days I am down. There are days when I feel like throwing in the towel. There are days when I'm discouraged. But when I do, I go to God in prayer. And there are moments when I'm in God, in, when God in prayer that the Holy Spirit comes on me. Sometimes I'm weeping. Sometimes when I pray in tongues, I'm weeping. Sometimes when I pray in tongues, it's just very calm, cool, and collected. I'm just sitting there and I'm praying in the Spirit. It's not like, holy moly, the, the walls are about to cave in. It's not, not a moment like that, but I go to praying in the Spirit. Sometimes it does feel like that. Sometimes it doesn't. But in those moments, often, oftentimes when I go in and I start praying in the Spirit, I might have gone in to that time of prayer, discouraged, but I come out encouraged. I might have gone in mad, but I come out with joy. I might have gone in angry, but I come out continuing and ready to continue to work for God. Here's what I'm doing. It's a personal language, and I'm building up myself in the spirit. Jude says it like this. Uh, Dear friends, build up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude 20 says that. You pray in the Holy Spirit, and when you pray in the Spirit, it serves to build you up. Speaking in tongues is not simply the thing that happens when we get in a church service and we feel good and excited. It is a practice, a spiritual practice, whereby the Holy Spirit enables us to pray in a different language, a heavenly language that builds us up in our faith, that builds us up in our faith. So tongues is a personal language. Second of all, um, Tongues is a prayer language, and I get at that a little bit with personal language, but I want to make sure we distinguish this a little bit. 1 Corinthians 14 and 14 says, For if I pray in a tongue, a language, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. See, speaking in tongues is a way you pray to God. Paul said it like this, when I pray in tongues, my mind, I don't know what I'm praying, but my spirit knows what it's praying. I'm praying with my spirit, not with my mind. I'm not saying, Father God, here are the three things I want to pray, right? I'm praying with the spirit, 
my spirit, not with my mind. Um, I had a professor at Duke. This absolutely shocked me. I was sitting in a class uh, on the history of biblical interpretation, and uh, she is a uh, historian at Duke, and she is a Methodist, husband's a Presbyterian, and she told me about the experience she had speaking in tongues as a college student at Emory, and she said that she said, it was like, I didn't know what I was praying, but I knew that I was praying something and that God was there. That's the greatest way. We don't know what we're saying, but we know that something is happening. There is some kind of communication between us and God. So, so praying in tongues, praying in a different language, is uh, it, it becomes a way to pray the will of God for my life. It becomes a way to pray the mysteries of God. That's what the scripture says. We pray the mysteries of God. Now, mystery here doesn't mean coming up on Halloween, spooky, or something like Unsolved Mysteries, right? You know, on uh, that, that uh, particular television show, crime show. It means the secret or the deep things of God. These are things that are beyond our ability to comprehend, but God has made a way for us to pray them. God's made a way for us to pray those things. So let me paraphrase 1 Corinthians 14 and 2 again. For those who speak in a tongue do not speak to other people, but to God. For nobody understands them since they are speaking the mysteries of God. When, we're, when you're praying, there are some times you get to praying over your family. And as you're praying over your family, uh, you, begin to pray in, you begin to pray in tongues. Someone, someone may begin to pray in tongues as you're praying over your family. And you don't know what you're praying for, but you're praying the will of God. You're praying the secrets of God. The Holy Spirit is praying through you as you, as you say those things. Let, let, let me, let me say, prove it to you this way, because I think this is important for us. Romans chapter 8. In fact, Romans chapter 8 is one of the best chapters in all of the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28. We know verse 28, uh, but I think it's important to understand it in the context of verse 26 through 28. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Won't you remember that? We don't know what to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. He who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who have been called according to his purpose. We know verse 28. But I want you to notice what the progression of thought in Romans. Verse 26, we don't know what to pray. Verse 27, but the Holy Spirit knows. Verse 28, now we know that all things work together for the good of those. How can I know now in verse 28 when I didn't know in verse 26? Because in verse 27, the Holy Spirit is said to know, and he's interceding through us. He's interceding for us and through us. And, and there are a lot of times when I get into an altar and I I've reached a place where I feel like I don't know what to pray for someone, or maybe sometimes I'll go to someone and I'll be begin to pray. But before I pray in English, I pray quietly in tongues, and I may pray in tongues for a little bit quietly uh, to kind of center my heart on what the Lord would say. Um, I, I often pray in tongues to start with. And as a result, I can tell you at times what ends up happening, I end up knowing what to pray. They come up to me later and said, you know, how did you know that? I, I hadn't told anybody that. And I said, well, you know, that's the only way I can tell you is it was a God thing. Um, because I got to a place and I started praying and the Lord started revealing. Let me tell you this story real quick because I want us to have some time to talk about this. But um, I was in Jessup, Georgia, and we were at a church singing with a group from Lee University. Uh, it was during the summer and we were passing out food at their, food, at their uh, community center during the day. And there were some of the students who were with us who were back in the chapel. They were uh, worshiping and praying with the director of this community center. And they called me up and they said, Zach, come on back here. We need you to pray for this woman. And so I went to the back and uh, they, this woman was usually, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I have a tendency to come and say, what can I pray for? Especially in that season. I'd come up to somebody and say, well, what do you want me to pray for? You know, I, I want to pray with some specificity. And uh, but this woman was deep in worship and they, someone was already praying with her. And so uh, I came up. I didn't come up saying, my God, I want you to touch her. You know, I, I didn't do any of that. I just came up and put my hand on her shoulder, and I just began to quietly pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues. And as I was praying, I got revelation of what I was supposed to say. And I said, Lord, I bind the spirit of fear 
on this woman's life. I rebuke the spirit of fear on this woman's life. The woman started weeping profusely. Afterwards, she came to me and she said, I have been working with drug addicts in this community and we're seeing them delivered, but my daughter is on drugs. And she said, last week, the devil woke me up and told me that if I didn't stop doing this ministry, he was going to kill my daughter. And he, she said, I've been living in fear for the last week. I had no idea. There was no way I could have known. But the Holy Spirit, I began to pray. And when I did, it was a prayer language. And as I began to pray, God began to reveal things. Praying in tongues doesn't mean that you won't ever endure problems. It doesn't mean that you won't ever worry about having an answer. But it is a gift that God has given us that we can use to respond to whatever is happening around us. And finally, this. Speaking in tongues is a praise language. It's a personal language, a prayer language, and it's a praise language. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 14 and 15, I, I'll pray with my spirit, but I'll also pray with my understanding, what I can know, understand, my, my native language. I'll sing with my spirit, but I'll also sing with my understanding. He said, I'm going to sing in tongues. I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing in a language I understand. I'm going to pray in a language I'm going to understand. Tongues, speaking in tongues becomes a way to praise God. I used to travel around and I'd go to churches and I would preach and uh, when you go around, you realize that uh, churches have their own songs and their own ways they sing those songs. I'd go in, and I wasn't just going to sit there and not worship. So I found myself, and I'm telling all these stories tonight because all I know are my stories, what, what, what I know from my personal experience. Um, and, and I found myself at times going in, and I would just lift my hand and say, Lord, I don't know this song, but I'm going to worship you. And I would sing in tongues and pray in tongues uh, to myself. That's not me bragging on me, just trying to illustrate to us that tongues, speaking in tongues, it's a language of praise. When they heard all the languages in Acts chapter 2, here's what they said in, in, in Acts chapter 2 and 11. We do hear them speak in our tongues, our languages, the wonderful works of God. When they spoke in tongues, they were praising God. So I want to remind us as we're, as we're looking at the role of tongues in our, in our personal prayer lives, in our in our, in our worship, in our times with God, in our times in church, remembering that it's a personal language. It is a prayer language. It is a praise language. And we're going to talk about uh, next week or the week after, depending on where it falls. Um, we're going to be talking about the gifts of the Spirit and how God oftentimes uses a person to speak in a, in a language. It's, it, they speak in tongues, but it is for the entire church. And then someone interprets that. And it's a message for the church. And we'll talk about that in the future. But this is just talking about our general personal language, our personal time with God, our personal uh, moments of speaking in tongues. So finally, here's what I want to say. Who does the speaking? Acts 4 says that when they spoke with tongues, they spoke as the Spirit gave. The old word was utterance, the unction, the ability, as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, I used to think, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to think the Holy Spirit just came in, would take my tongue and just flap it all around, take my vocal cords and, and say everything. And, uh, I, you know, I really thought that's how, how speaking in tongues was. You know, Holy Spirit just kind of come in, just take my tongue and just flap it all over the place, and that's how it went. Maybe I was the only one. But what I've come to find out is, in my walk, I am the one who does the speaking. The Holy Spirit is not going to take my vocal cords. I am the one who does the speaking, but the Spirit enables me. Now, this may look different for different people. I heard one pastor tell me uh, that he, he could hear the language and he would say it. You know, I, I had one person say that it was almost like they could, they could, they could see it typed out before them. Um, for me, it reminds me of what Jesus says in John chapter 7 when he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit there. It's like it starts in my, it, it's almost like it starts down deep in my gut. Now, that's going to sound crazy to some people. Like, you know, that, that's bad pizza you had you're talking about. No, 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 no. This, this is, it's like it starts deep and it just, it's like a bubbling almost out. out. Um, and so I, I think what we've got to realize is it's one of those things that we, that we learn about. Uh, you, you learn what the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit is. And I think I mentioned this last week and I'll mention this now. When I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I, I was so excited to speak in tongues, uh, that there there were moments, you know, I, I would I'd be in the worship service in the middle, and I want to speak in tongues so bad, and I'm discerning what is the Holy Spirit, 
you know, I'd be in church and I'd go, oh, ta, 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 my child. I said, oh, wait, never mind. That's not God. Never mind. Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, I was so excited to want to speak in tongues that I was just ready just to give it everything I had. Uh, but what I had to do was I had to discern what was God and what was not. And that takes, for some people, that takes more time than others. Uh, some people, you know, just um, some people, it, it, it comes to them and others, it kind of is discerning what is the, what is the unctioning of, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I, I want us to, I think there has to be that demystifying of tongues, that recognition that it, there is something um, here that is, it's not weird, it's not crazy, but it is a spiritual gift uh, available to you and I for today.